the FBI has a new cryptocurrency unit to counter crypto crimes. But will it infringe on privacy and free speech? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. By now, probably everyone's heard of cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin or meme coins like Dogecoin. One cool thing about cryptocurrency is it acts as a sort of alternative currency that exists outside the control of any government or bank. Kind of like hiding gold under your mattress, but less uncomfortable to sleep on. Cryptocurrency is really important for people who live under authoritarian regimes. They have access to funds that can't be monitored, frozen, or stolen. However, cryptocurrency also allows criminals to have access to funds that can't be monitored, frozen, or stolen. For example, last year, hackers held a major U.S. oil pipeline hostage for $4.4 million worth of Bitcoin. And that's just a drop in the bucket. According to Chainalysis Inc., Criminal organizations hold over $25 billion worth of cryptocurrency. Hold on, it's now $15 billion. Okay, now it's $30 billion. Look, cryptocurrency is more volatile than Elon Musk's Twitter account. Most of the crypto held by criminals comes from stolen funds, followed by darknet market funds, scams, fraud shops, and ransomware. Now, for the oil pipeline hack I mentioned earlier, the FBI was able to get over $2 million in Bitcoin back. But this is a huge problem for law enforcement. That's why the Justice Department wants more power to combat criminal use of cryptocurrencies. They're creating a new FBI crypto crime unit. It's called the Virtual Asset Exploitation Unit. Its job is tracking and seizing illicit cryptocurrencies as part of a broader shift in focus toward disruption of international criminal networks rather than just their prosecution. Sounds exciting. Can't wait for the new CBS procedural, FBI Crypto Crime. The first 10 episodes will just be FBI agents trying to explain Bitcoin to CBS viewers. But it doesn't stop there. To go after these criminal networks, the Justice Department wants an international law enforcement effort. And that might mean crypto will no longer be outside government control. More after the break. Welcome back. Last week was the Munich Security Conference. It's an annual conference on international security policy held in Germany. And the Justice Department's Deputy Attorney General, Lisa Monaco, spoke about the need for an international effort to go after cyber criminals. That is why prosecutors handling significant cyber investigations will now be required to consult with the department's international and cybercrime specialists to identify international actions that might be able to help stop a threat. International cooperation will not be an afterthought. Essentially, they want to stop crime before it happens. Disrupt criminal activities by, for example, seizing computer servers potentially used for cyber crimes. The point is to cut off criminal access to crypto. According to Monaco, ransomware and digital extortion, like many other crimes fueled by cryptocurrency, only work if the bad guys get paid, which means we have to bust their business model. Part of this relies on being tough on companies and federal contractors. They tend not to want to report security breaches because it makes them look bad. That means cyber criminals or even hostile foreign actors like the Chinese Communist Party can get away with a lot. It also involves getting a new Justice Department cyber operations liaison embedded in Europe, who would work with both U.S. prosecutors and European officials. Now, for some, this may be reassuring that we're deterring crime. Crypto crimes often cross borders, so having this type of focus on international cooperation could help fight it. According to a financial crimes and money laundering expert at FeatureSpace, because of the nature of the jurisdiction and the laws involved, crypto crimes are barely prosecuted crimes. But regulating cryptocurrency isn't easy. Even if one country has a lot of oversight, another country might not. That creates loopholes cyber criminals can use to move their coins to jurisdictions with less oversight. And that money can be used to fund things like drugs, terrorism, and human trafficking. 
Cryptocurrency is complex, and criminals are finding new ways to use it. That's why there's a global push to regulate cryptocurrency, especially in Europe. The EU is talking about banning cryptocurrency anonymity. Under these proposals, crypto service providers would have to identify virtual asset owners, senders and receivers of transactions. A number of countries are talking about this. But this runs into conflict with one of the biggest reasons for cryptocurrency, which is that it's decentralized and anonymous. That goes against the whole point of it. It's like having a secret Santa gift exchange where everyone knows who's giving them a gift. It's not secret anymore. That's why there's concern governments around the world are using these law enforcement measures to crack down on cryptocurrency for everyone. And guess what? At least in the US, the government is invoking 9-11. More after the break. Welcome back. We have to stop crime before it happens. That's a lesson the Justice Department's Deputy Attorney General, Lisa Monaco, learned from 9-11. One of the things, the key things, I learned after September 11th, when I was at, both at the FBI and as head of the National Security Division, it's that success is not prosecuting terrorists after an attack. Success is preventing that attack in the first place. We need to apply that same thinking to our cyber investigations. The same thinking? Remember, 9-11 gave us the Patriot Act, which completely overhauled the government's ability to spy on Americans. According to the Brennan Center for Justice, easy governmental access to the private lives of law-abiding citizens has proven to have scant national security benefit, while enabling the monitoring of racial and religious minorities, protesters, and political opponents. Powerful government organs love invoking 9-11. And they've all learned how to do it. It's like their version of playing Stairway to Heaven. So when the Department of Justice brings up 9-11 in relation to cryptocurrencies, this is many people worried. People are afraid the government is going to crack down on crypto not to stop crime, but because it's a currency outside their control. Look no further than Canada. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has already given banks power to freeze funds without court order in a bid to choke off trucker protest funding. As a result of him invoking emergency powers, banks are even getting protesters' names. And cryptocurrency isn't safe either. According to the founder of Ethereum, this authoritarian move shows why crypto serves as a potential check against government overreach. If the government is not willing to like follow the processes, follow the laws, give people a chance to defend themselves and all of those things, and they just want to like, you know, talk to the banks and basically cut out people's financial livelihoods without due process. I mean, you know, honestly, yeah, like that is an example of uh, the sort of thing that like de that, that decentralized technology is there to make more difficult. Yeah, that could be a big reason why governments around the world want to regulate crypto. Well, that plus the latest meme coin launch, crime coin you know someone's gonna buy it. So what do you think? Is there a way to fight criminal use of crypto without harming law-abiding citizens? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this show, please know we could not do it without direct support from viewers like you. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered and contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep the show going. So click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.